City Kids and happy Valentine's Day! My name is Miss Katie and I just love being with you little cutie patooties. I just love you! Do you remember our story from last week? Well, there was a warrior leader named Joshua and they had some walls to knock down. And how did they do it? Do you remember? Did they use big weapons and cannons? No, they didn't. They just obeyed God. God said to blow in their trumpets and shout as loud as they could, and the walls came tumbling down. Isn't that amazing? God keeps doing amazing things. Let's stand up and worship this God who is awesome. He is strong and he is caring. He takes care of his people. Dance, dance, shake it up, shake it up.
that game was hard. Even with my heart glasses on, I had a hard time finding what was different. Did you? Ooh. So I have heard that we've had some superheroes on City Kids Live lately. I saw Stewie was Captain Brainiac, and he has an amazing memory, and he never forgets anything. Amazing. And then we had Indestructo Girl, and she was so strong. Do you remember how she was bending the bar of iron? Oh, that is incredible. Well, guess what? Today, I have found my own little bin of special superhero items. And when I put them on, they give me superpowers. So I'm going to put something on, and I want you to try to guess what power I have. Ready? Should be fun. Hmm. What do you think? Okay, you have to look at me and see if you can guess what my power is. I know, I know, this one's kind of easy. I've got my red mask with the insect eyes. I've got red gloves with webs coming out. Do you know? Yes, I'm just like Spider-Man. I can crawl up walls and I can shoot webs out of my hands. Amazing, huh? All right, let's see if you can do the next one. <gasps> what do you think? Black mask, lightning bolt, Look at what you see and guess what I have. What superpower do I have? Okay, if you thought that I was in control of the weather and I could make a storm swirl around here in one minute, you're wrong. If you thought, wow, lightning is strong, she must be able to just knock over a building with one glance of her eyes, you're wrong again. Do you know what this lightning bolt means? It means I am fast as lightning. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Is that amazing? I am so fast. All right, let's see about the next one. Okay, I don't think you'll ever guess this one. All I'm wearing are some black shades. I can see you, but can you see me? Ha ha, see, I went invisible. And now you can't even see me. Isn't that an amazing power? Okay, wait. Wait, now, how do I make myself visible again? Oh, whoo, here I am. That's a dangerous one. You don't wanna get stuck invisible. Okay, here's the last one. I've got pink glasses. I've got a pink tutu. I've got pink wings, pink unicorn, pink everything. Do you know what my superpower is? Well, I know my wings probably gave it away. I can fly, but I can't show you that today. I actually have a different power that I can show you. Do you know what it is? It's perfect for Valentine's Day. I can turn anything with this wand into the color pink. Are you ready? Here we go. Isn't that amazing? Don't you wish you had that power for Valentine's Day? You turn everything pink. Oh. Man, I would love that. Well, in today's story, we do not have any superheroes, but God's people are looking for a new king. Remember how you looked at me and you tried to figure out what power I had? Well, the people are looking at the outside of people and trying to figure out, hmm, what does a king look like? But sometimes God has different ideas than we do. Let's see what happens in this story. The teeny weeny true king. God's people had a new land. Now they wanted a king. But God is your king, Samuel told them. He is the one who looks after you best. But we want a real king, they said. One we can see. God knew that a king might not be kind to his people or look after them as well as he would. But God's people didn't care. They wanted a king and they wanted him now. So God gave them a king. He was called Saul and he seemed like a good king at first, but he became proud and stopped listening to God. He didn't obey God 
or love God with his whole heart. Saul can't help me with my plan, God said. I need a king who loves me and will teach my people to love me. I need a true king. God had just the one in mind. Go to Bethlehem, God told Samuel. You'll find the new king there. Samuel's job was to listen to God and tell people what God said. So Samuel went to the little town of Bethlehem. God told Samuel to go to Jesse's house. God was going to choose one of Jesse's sons to be the new king. Jesse had seven strong sons. Now, in those days, if you were going to be the king, you didn't have to be the richest or the cleverest, although that was always nice. You had to look like a king, which meant you had to be the tallest and the strongest. So you could carry the longest swords and biggest armour and defeat everyone. And it didn't hurt to be handsome either. Samuel asked Jesse to bring him each son in turn. So Jesse brought the oldest, tallest, strongest son. Oh, well, this must be the new king, Samuel thought. He looks like a king. But God didn't choose him. You're thinking about what he looks like on the outside, God told Samuel. But I'm looking at his heart, what he's like on the inside. So Jesse showed Samuel his next oldest, tallest, strongest son. But God didn't choose him either. In fact, God didn't choose any of the seven sons. Samuel said, is that all? Jesse laughed. Oh, well, there's the youngest one, but he's just the weakling of the family. He's only teeny. Bring him, said Samuel. Jesse's youngest son came running up and God spoke quietly to Samuel. This is the one. His name was David. He has a heart like mine, God said. It is full of love. He will help me with my secret rescue plan. And one of his children's children's children will be the king. And that king will rule the world forever. Samuel anointed David's head with oil, which was a special way to show that you are God's chosen king. You will be the new king one day, Samuel told him. And sure enough, when he grew up, David became king. God chose David to be king because God was getting his people ready for an even greater king who was coming. Once again, God would say, Go to Bethlehem. You'll find the new king there. And there... One starry night in Bethlehem, in the town of David, three wise men would find him. So God's people wanted a new king. They wanted a big king, a strong king. And so they were looking at the outside of people to see if they could figure out who would be a really great king. Now, what do you think all the people thought when God chose David? Was he the biggest? Nope. Was he the strongest? Nope. But you know what? God knew something they didn't know. He was looking at David's heart. David's heart was what the Bible describes. It said he was a man after God's own heart. Now that doesn't mean that David was perfect because if you know anything about the rest of his life, he made some really bad choices. But he was a man after God's own heart. He knew that God was loving and trustworthy and good, and he wanted to know him, trust him, obey him. So God wasn't looking at the outside of David, he was looking at his heart. Now, you know what else is cool about this story is we see how Jesus and David were similar. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. And where was David from? Bethlehem. And you know what else? People didn't think that David was gonna be a great king at first. Well, you know what? People were a little confused about Jesus too. Did he come like a big, strong king? Nope, he didn't. 
Remember, he was born in Bethlehem as a little helpless baby in a stable full of animals, and his parents weren't really any big deal. I bet everyone was like, "Mm -mm, that can't be our king. But of course he was. Jesus was God's son. He had a heart just like God's heart. Now, David, he wrote a bunch of songs and poems that we find in the book of Psalms. And that's our memory verse that we've been learning. It's Psalm 16, 8. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. I will not be shaken. All right, let's stand up and sing to this God who has a good heart and he loves us so much. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are so good. You are so loving. We thank you that you show us that you don't look at the outside of us. You look inside at our hearts. I pray that you would give us hearts that want to know you and trust you and obey you because you are our loving Father. We thank you for the truth today, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, city kids, happy Valentine's Day. Go love on your family and your friends.